as you can see, this experiment uh, is our experiment versus or called as a test and bridge. So, as you can see here, we got two clicks, point um, and for one bar, and we got uh, one mess and also uh, one ability. So, I would like to uh, say uh, uh, some introduction about our uh, experiment. This is free vibration with a uh, single degree of freedom and without damping. So basically, um, vibration system can be uh, classified into a free vibration and post vibration system. A system that is subjected to a repeating external force uh, is called as a force vibration, force vibration system. So while free vibration system is defined as a system uh, left to vibrate on its own after the uh, initial disturbance. No external force act on the system. So uh, this is the graph, um, theoretical graph that um, we're supposed to have. So basically, um, uh, that uh, in assumption of zero damping is technically not accurate. In reality, there's almost exists some resistant in vibration system like a gravitational force and air resistant. This is the, this resistance will damp the vibration and dissipate, dissipate energy, the oscillatory motion caused by initial disturbance will eventually be reduced to zero. So I will uh, in our experiment there is a few object, uh, objective. That is first our objective is to measure the natural frequency and find the relationship of natural frequency by applying different loads. Secondly, to compare both theoretically and experiment, experimental data for natural frequency and finally to find the decay rate of system with different loads. Now, this is the DAISY lab layout. So, the data will input from the NITQ mesh by using uh, by choosing the voltage sensor because the LVTT is known as linear voltage differential transducer, which is a type of electrical transformer used for measuring linear displacement. Therefore, the sensor will be using voltage to uh, to convert. The data and the scaling is used to change the voltage, change the voltage into the displacement value. So the digital meter will show will show the calibration after after we do the calibration from voltage and change to the displacement. And digital filter is used in this case because we need to filter up. Uh, filter up the high frequency frequency data so that we are just using 20 hertz low pass frequency which means that only 20 hertz of frequency we only uh, the DC that we only get the data of lower lower than 20 hertz and there are two differentiation that we use here because we need to get the uh, acceleration. Acceleration is basically differentiation after the displacement. The first displacement 
the first differentiation we will get velocity and the second differentiation we will get acceleration and from here acceleration we using the FFT to get the fast Fourier transform to to get the frequency of the system and the child recorder will record the sinusoidal graph uh, along the entire experiment. Okay, now I will show you how to conduct our experiment. First, we take the 500 gram as our initial load. Then we put it as... We put it, we use our hand to pull under the electron, then we resist it. We get our reading in our digital. Then, we can look at the speed. Okay, then you can see the four graph here. This is the YT chart that will display the frequency we show of our free operation and then system. This is before filter, then this is after filter. So we can see that the after filter graph will look better. Then it can reduce uncertain frequency. Okay, I will show you how I conduct, how we can get the reading of the decay rate and the natural frequency that we know. Yes, you can see the sinusoidal graph. So we can, from this graph, we can obtain the decay rate of our free operation and then system. So, for here, for the YT chart at last, we can see the pitch here. So from pitch, we can get the natural frequency that we know. So this is what our experiment uh, needed. So after that, we will display the load with one kilo and one point five kilo to our system. Then we continue to carry out the, our experiment. Now I will explain about the result and discussion for our experiment. As you can see from this table we correct the natural frequency which have two one is experimental and one is theoretical the theoretical one is how we use the formula to calculate and this experimental is follow what we do in our experiment after that we will find the percentage error between the two natural frequencies as you can see just a little bit, little bit difference and this is the decorate what we get now I will show you the graph this is the graph of the mass US natural frequencies, which is experimental. As you can see, when we add on our load, the, load, the mass increase, the natural frequency also increase. Next, this is the mass US that both natural frequency, which is the theoretical and the experimental. We also can see that both also increase when the mass increase and there are a little bit difference between both of them. Next is mass vs decay rate. How we get our decay rate? The decay rate is same with the same with the gradient of the sinusoidal graph. Okay, now I will show you we have made our objective. The first one is we have find our natural frequencies by applying di different rules. Then the next one is we compare both of the natural frequencies, which is theoretically and experimental. And the last one is we have find the decay rate from this, which is same with the gradient of the exponent graph of the sinusoidal charge. Then we successfully complete our experiment. That's all for us. Thank you.